News 10 NBC at 6 starts in 90 seconds. At Randall Farnsworth, whether you're buying your first car or you're looking for your 10th car, we're going to make sure we earn your business and we'll do whatever it takes to keep you coming back. After all, our goal is to make you a Randall Farnsworth customer for life. So whatever you're looking to drive, come see why at Randall Farnsworth, you always get more than your money's worth. Randall Farnsworth Automotive in Canandaigua and the new Randall Chevrolet in Victor. NBC presents a whole new kind of reality show where one man holds the prize. That would be me. NBC one week from Thursday, Donald Trump will challenge 16 young business hotshots to fight for just one job running one of his companies. Right. Shut up! Each week, someone will hear the words You're fired. 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 until fired. just one becomes The Apprentice. Premieres one week from Thursday on NBC. It's the S&K Winter Clearance Sale. Save 25% and more on clearance price suits from two for $200. Markdowns on over 50,000 suits. Plus, take 50% off selected Winter Clearance Sale sport coats. Shop now and save 50% on selected Winter Clearance Sale sportswear. Or take 50% off all Winter Clearance Sale outerwear. So look for the S&K Winter Clearance tags today. Because if you demand value, you don't want to miss the Winter Clearance Sale at S&K. You're watching 10 NBC Rochester. Good evening. I'm Berkeley Green. Janet and Gabe have the night off. The week off is in fact. We begin tonight with some breaking news. Rochester police are on the scene of a shooting inside a homeless shelter. It happened at the House of Mercy within the past hour. Ray Lovato is live at the scene right now and joins us with more information. Ray? Berkeley, I count at least a dozen city police cars here. Not long ago, it was chaos as they were trying to search for a suspect that ran into the darkness. A police lieutenant told me uh, not long ago that there was a man in an office. Somebody came in and shot him in the back. I spoke to a person that was in the house. They said that this uh, victim was the manager, a man they call CW. He's well known in the neighborhood, and he thinks it might have been a robbery, but police have not confirmed that. The uh, victim has been taken to Rochester General Hospital. We do not know if his wound is life-threatening or not. Uh, what we can say here, though, is that there is irony with this. Just one week ago, the New York Times had a lengthy uh, article about, quote, the mean streets of New York, and they were not New York City, but Rochester, New York. And the article said that a rise in violence and homicides in Rochester has a city trying to redefine, protect, and save its image. Um, and in the article, there was a picture of Sister Grace Miller, who is the uh, longtime uh, person here from the uh, Catholic Church that has been trying to help the people in this neighborhood with her house of mercy. But again, one victim at Rochester General Hospital, the shooter still at large, Ray Lovato reporting live from Joseph Avenue. All right, thank you, Ray, and more to come on that tonight at 11 o'clock. Sheriff's investigators in Genesee County are trying to figure out how an eight-year-old girl was shot and killed by her 15-year-old cousin. It happened around 2.30 this morning in Basem on the Tonawana Indian Reservation. The Genesee County Sheriff's Department says four kids, including the victim, Miranda Printup, were playing in a bedroom. Printup was standing just seven feet away when her cousin's shotgun went off. Deputies say it's not clear if the gun fired accidentally or if the teen pulled the trigger thinking the gun wasn't loaded. Jennifer Johnson has reaction from the family and a closer look at these gun laws. Jennifer? Well, Rick, Berkeley, Miranda Printup was simply waiting for her mother to come home. She and her sister were at her aunt's house as their mother was out for the evening. She and her cousins had been playing video games when her cousin picked up a gun. It went off and Printup ended up dead. Beautiful little girl. Learning how to enjoy a little girl's life as far as becoming a little homemaker. Her grandmother said she was particularly good at baking apple pies. Printup lived in this house on the Tonawanda Indian Reservation. However, this morning she was here, up the street at her aunt's home, hanging out with her cousins. Police say at 2.36 the gun went off. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Her grandmother got the news an hour later. Her father came and woke us up at 3.30 this morning and told us that he's little girl life had been taken away from him of course you put four young kids uh, 
in a bedroom uh, with a loaded shotgun at uh, 2.30 in the morning. Uh, certainly that played a part in this whole thing. You know, what's he doing handling a hand, uh, firearm at uh, 2.30 in the morning? Sheriff Meha is trying to figure out how the 15-year-old was handling the firearm. Did it accidentally go off while he was holding it? Or did he pull the trigger as a joke, thinking the shotgun was not loaded? Either way, the sheriff says it was not illegal for him to have the gun. That's because Tonawanda is an independent nation. Although it borders New York State, the gun laws here don't apply there. In New York State, you must be 21 to own a handgun, you must pass a background check to buy any firearm, and you need a permit to hunt. None of that applies to Native Americans on the reservation, but Sheriff Maha says it's usually not a problem. As far as any accidental or, uh, shootings or unintentional shootings, there have not been a lot on the reservation. And for now, the 15-year-old cousin has not been arrested. It will be up to the Genesee County attorney to decide if he will be. The teenager could be charged with reckless manslaughter. Reporting live in the newsroom, Jennifer Johnson, News 10, NBC. 2003 is winding down. The new year is just a few hours away. And tonight, Ray Lovato looks back at some of the major stories of this past year. March 19th, war in Iraq. The first casualties with ties to Rochester. Chief Warrant Officer Eric Smith, a Brighton High School and RIT graduate, Smith was a Black Hawk helicopter pilot who was in a chopper that went down while transporting him and other pilots. My brother was neither for the war or against the war. He had been in 16 years. He did his duty as we all do our duty when that time comes. In July, local Army National Guardsman Heath McMillan died when his unit came under attack on patrol south of Baghdad. Among those at the funeral for the 29-year-old from Clifton Springs was Governor George Pataki, who posthumously awarded him the New York Medal of Valor. But there were happy moments, too, like when the 914th Airlift Wing returned to Niagara Falls Air Base in June. Good to see you. In April, Mother Nature apparently thought one ice storm was not enough for Rochester. The icy onslaught was a virtual repeat of the 1991 storm that left hundreds of thousands of people without power sheet of ice on just about everything. Other stories grabbed our attention, like the five alarm tanker truck fire on Ridge Road in April that claimed one life and left several families homeless. And the big warehouse fire on Whitney Street in June, set apparently by vandals. August 12th, a lone robber held up the Xerox Federal Credit Union in Webster and shot two bystanders. One died, and the shooter is still at large. August 14th, it was a Thursday when the lights went out. The massive northeast blackout left tens of millions of people in the dark. And that was also the week of a major golf tournament at Oak Hill. Little known Sean McKeel shot lights out to win the PGA. Tiger Woods attracted huge crowds, but his game that week was more like a Tiger Cub. In November, Monroe County elected the first woman county executive. Maggie Brooks easily defeated Rochester Mayor Bill Johnson. And now she gets to put her hands on the helm to steer Monroe County into 2004. Ray Lovato, News 10, NBC. Fascinating to look back at some of those stories, uh, as tragic as many of them were as well. But we look at that ice storm as well, and uh, it just coated the entire area. I one remember being the, out there and seeing those branches down on the ground. Yeah, one for the history books, Berkeley. Yeah. It was a big year for snowstorms, a historical year for tornadoes across the Is country. Is that right? And in fact, in fa there were no tornadoes recorded in the whole month of December, which was also unusual, but hmm. the whole year combined more tornadoes than uh, ever before on record uh, according to the, the storm prediction center so <laughs> and now we've got green grass in uh, rochester and on new year's eve it doesn't make any sense and mother nature <laughs> teasing us with spring but winter is not far off it's still out there, All right. and we're going to talk about uh, when it might get here live from the news 10 nbc weather lab now here's the latest weather from the news 10 nbc weather lab right now the big story out there this evening if you're stepping out to perhaps do a little bit of uh, Oh, reveling, if you will, for this New Year's Eve is the wind, and it is going to be a factor through about 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. We just had a report from Rochester Airport that the peak wind has gusted to 46 miles per hour, so make sure you have both hands on the steering wheel if you're stepping out this evening. 42 degrees, the temperature right now downtown, and let's go to the forecast center, look at some weather headlines, and talk about what we're going to be dealing with here as we go into 2004. Yes, for this last night of 2003, it will be windy. Look out for some of those wind gusts, especially 
mostly west of the Genesee. But the New Year's Day looks nice. It'll be quiet. The winds will have relaxed. We'll find some sunshine. Temperatures will be uh, relatively seasonable for this time of year. It will turn a bit more gray. A touch on the wet side for Friday as another system heads our way, albeit weak. And then yet another mild spell heads our way for Saturday. So when will some real winter get to western New York. Well, later next week, it looks like the circumpolar vortex that's been taking up residence in western portions of Canada will slide eastward a little bit. And as a wave of low pressure develops along this jet stream, which will by then be displaced a little bit further to the south, it might start to try to tap some of this cold air. And with a northeast flow off Lake Ontario, we could see some enhancement, maybe some snow to start out early next week. It is a long ways off. The computer models will go through many more runs to fine tune this, but we are seeing signals that by the time we get into January 5th and beyond, uh, into the second week of January, it could turn pretty chilly around these parts. In the meantime, today, the reason why we have all this wind is this little swirl you see in the clouds. This is a pretty potent little vort max, little vorticity maximum. That just means there's a lot of spin associated with this little system. It's got a lot of cyclonic curvature. You can see it right there, nice counterclockwise circulation. So as it spins through, it's churning up the atmosphere a little bit. We have winds on the order of 20 to 30 miles an hour sustained out there, not mentioning the peak gusts, which are up on the order of 40 miles an hour at this hour. Weather facts for today, the high temperature 48, so pretty mild. The normal is 33, but not as warm as what it was on New Year's Eve, 1875. When it got up to 70 on 1963 New Year's Eve, it was minus 5 for low. Today's low temperature was 29, no precipitation recorded today. Right now, 42 degrees with some high clouds. The breeze, as I mentioned, busy out of the west southwest at 20 miles per hour. Western New York temperature temperatures in Monroe County in particular, mainly in the mid 40s, Wayne County, Williamson checking in with 44, Sotus 42, the Waterloo 43, and up on the hilltop in Wyoming County, Diane Burnham and Middlebury checks in with 39. On the national scene, it's quite mild to the south, quite chilly to the north. There's a pretty good jet right here in between. That's where the north-south temperature gradient lies. And along that jet, which has been fairly flat across the eastern half of the U.S., we've seen these little disturbances coming through, like this one that's over us right now. Behind it, though, we get a break, so that's why we have some sunshine in the forecast for tomorrow. But look at the clouds beginning to build up here through the uh, Rocky Mountain states. That's moisture that's beginning to build and blossom and that will be here for Friday and into Saturday. So the weather map looks like this. High pressure in place for New Year's Day means some sunshine. Get out and enjoy. At least the uh, temperatures will be fairly seasonable for this time of year. We'll be tracking a warm front though off to our west and that will be trying to build on through here later on Friday. It was a southerly flow building and that means temperatures will get much milder going into the start of the weekend. But in the meantime, for tonight, it's going to be windy to start and we'll find some patchy clouds. It'll be a bit chilly too. The low temperature 26 to 30. Tomorrow, a nice start to 2004 with some intervals of sun. The high 35 to 40. Five day forecast shows the clouds thickening for Friday. Maybe a little wet snow or rain. Temperatures into the 40s. 50s for Saturday, Berkeley with some showers. Those showers will turn to a little bit of wet snow later Sunday and it turns mm -hmm. much colder going to early next week. This temperature today, tonight, uh, I think they're expecting the, the crowds in New York, Manhattan are huge. They're expecting the bigger crowds down in New York City because of this warm weather tonight, too. Perfect right. down there. It's going to be good. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. Well, the district attorney's office decides whether or not to seek the death penalty in a high-profile murder case. That story is coming up. And a mother in Charlotte hasn't seen her son in months. He's stationed in Iraq. But now she's getting a chance to see him in print. News 10 NBC is brought to you by Whitehaven Memorial Park. At Whitehaven Memorial Park, we help people remember because no one should be forgotten. With a permanent memorial at Whitehaven, there will always be a record of your loved one's life for future generations. And your family will always have a special place to visit and remember. Plan now to preserve your family's unique heritage. Whitehaven Memorial Park. A beautiful place to remember. Over 500 cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. Patrick Pontiac GMC and Jeep's after Christmas sales event on West Henrietta Road next to Marketplace Mall. Ruby Gordon's New Year's Day sale with no payments, no interest for one full year. Plus, a trip for two including airfare and hotel. At Ruby Gordon, we are Rochester's Furniture Store. Because it's never too late to start planning for your future, look to ESL Investment Services. This year it's history. But the savings aren't a mystery. With Rochester Linoleum and Carpet One's New Year's Day. Up to 50% off carpet and zero money down, zero payment, zero interest for one year. New Year's Day only. Nazareth Fulbright scholars have been to the mountains, 
deserts, cities, and universities of the world. Scholars like E.J. Monster, a foreign service officer in Kenya, are taking the Nazareth tradition of excellence to the realms of government and business, science and medicine, teaching and art. Nazareth graduates reaching out to the world, leaving their mark. Nazareth College, the heart of excellence. The ESL Jefferson Awards, ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Nomination forms are available at any ESL branch or online at ESL.org. Prosecutors will not seek the death penalty in what they call a murder for hire. Penfield attorney Kevin Bryant is accused of killing his wife and paying his brother-in-law to help carry out the murder. Tabitha Bryant was shot and stabbed inside her Penfield home in July. District Attorney Howard Rellin said he listened to the wishes of the victim's family to not seek the death penalty. The DA's office will go for a sentence of life in prison without parole. Bryant is charged with first-degree murder. The victim's stepbrother, Seoul Reinwenner, has confessed to the killing and has implicated Bryant in the murder. Tap of the Bryant's family members were in court today. They say Rellin's decision is in the best interest of the Bryant's two children. No sense at all. We can look at the future. And we don't really feel that that would add anything to it and it would take from the two young boys, it would take from the relationships of the families that has been had over some years. This is a case where factually there is no question that the case falls within the statute and were it not for the strong feelings of the family, we would be seeking the death penalty. Bryant's, uh, Kevin Bryant's parents have custody of those two small children. A local soldier is on the pages of Time Magazine's Person of the Year issue. 27-year-old Captain Robert Brewer is from Charlotte, but he's been stationed in Iraq since May. We talked with his mother, Janice Brewer, this afternoon. In the magazine, Captain Brewer is shown assisting an Iraqi woman whose son has been captured. Mrs. Brewer told us that she felt uh, when she saw the picture of the son's picture in the magazine. Well, you can get a uh, different kind of uh, fuel if you're heading out on the thruway this holiday. And still ahead, the lucky store that sold that winning Mega Moons ticket. News 10 NBC is brought to you by Lowers Furniture. Start the year right at the Lowers One Day New Year's Day Celebration Sale. New Year's Day, 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. Save 20 to 50 percent on floor samples, one-of-a-kinds, closeouts, and special buys. 10 percent on special orders. Qualified buyers get free financing for 12 full months. Free gifts for the first 50 shoppers. Register to win a $100 gift certificate hourly and a grand prize $500 gift certificate. Refreshments all day. The Lowers Furniture New Year's Celebration Sale at Lowers Your Home. The last few days of Mitsubishi's year-end clearance is your last chance to save. Get up to $4,000 factory cash on select remaining 2003 vehicles, or get 0% financing for 72 months on any one of them, like the Montero, or the Outlander, the Eclipse, even on our best-selling sedan, the Galant. And they all come with the Mitsubishi warranty. More style, more savings. The only thing you don't have is more time. Visit your Mitsubishi retailer today. You can hear News 10 NBC on the radio every day on WYSL 1040. These broadcasts are made possible by the Randall Farnsworth Auto Group. All across New York, small businesses, working people, and their families finally have quality health insurance they can afford, thanks to Healthy New York. My job doesn't offer health insurance, but I need coverage. And now it's more affordable than ever, with lower premiums, more choices, and it's easier to qualify. Keeping working families and small businesses stronger and healthier. That's Healthy New York. To find out if you qualify, call 1-866-HEALTHY-NY. End your year with a win at the Hyundai Win-Win Year-End Event. Win with the stylish Hyundai Sonata. Get up to $3,000 cash back with 0% APR on select Sonatas. Save thousands over comparable Toyotas and Hondas. And you win with America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. So drive away a winner at the Hyundai Win-Win Year-End Event. Now through January 2nd. Get a 2004 Sonata with up to 3,000 cash back or 0% APR. Rochesterians know where to go for the best value in furniture for their homes. Value City Furniture. You just can't do any better. 
Someone is holding a Mega Millions ticket worth $155 million tonight. The winning ticket was sold at a convenience store in the Cleveland suburb of South Euclid. The winner chose the lump sum, so they're going to collect $90 million before taxes. Not too shabby. Well, if you're out driving tonight on the thruway tonight or tomorrow, you can get a free cup of coffee or tea. Just stop at any of the rest stops. It's a tradition that's been going on for 40 years now. The Thruway Authority urges all drivers to take frequent breaks to avoid falling asleep at the wheel. Coming up in sports, the coaching search continues in Buffalo, and a pair of Ravens clean up the postseason award circuit. Mark Ruba is in for Rich. That's the sports. News 10 NBC is brought to you by McLeod Chevrolet. Word of mouth sells McLeod, and right now the words are McLeod New Truck Month. All Chevrolet trucks are on sale. Inventory is huge. Choice is great. Financing is the lowest. For 45 years now, word of mouth sells McLeod. We'll be there. Come and check out our no baloney pricing and low GM financing. Word of mouth sells McLeod. Ask anyone who's been here. McLeod Chevrolet, Route 31, a hop, skip, and a jump past Lollipop Farm. At Clover's incredible half-off after Christmas sale, get up to 50% off slate pool tables. Many are priced below cost. Showwood table is just $6.88. Antique-style slate pool tables from $9.88. You'll save hundreds, even thousands, on over 1,000 new floor models and one-of-a-kind tables. And that's not all. Save up to 50% off on foosball tables and game tables. Beautiful wood bars from $3.88. Over 1,000 bar stools from just $9. Save on spas, fireplaces, and swimming pools, too. And get no payments, no interest for six months. Only at Clover. So many lawyers to choose from. Bill's accident was just awful. The cost, the doctors, how will we get by? Here's the firm we can trust. Trust is one reason why Sully Millen Barnes is the area's largest personal injury firm. It does matter which law firm you choose. We have the success and the experience to fight for what you deserve. Trust, experience, success, it makes a difference. These guys made a smart move. They went to the 25th annual Toyotathon, the year's biggest sales event, and got the best year-end values and best new truck models ever. Get to your Toyota dealer right now and get Tacoma with $1,000 cash back or save on Tundra with two amazing year-end offers of $1,500 cash back or 0% financing. That's 0% financing on Tundra. Come on, get to the 25th annual Toyotathon. Wouldn't you look smart in a new Toyota? Now, here's Mark Gruba with sports on News 10 NBC. While many are toasting the new year tonight, Tom Donahoe will be thinking about the work ahead. Finding a new head coach for the Bills is at the top of his New Year's resolutions list. Patriots offensive coordinator Charlie, Charlie Weiss and defensive coordinator Romeo Cornell are the hot assistants. Rams defensive coordinator Lovey Smith is also a possibility. Each must be interviewed before this weekend or wait until their respective teams have been eliminated from the playoffs. Regardless of who gets the job in the end, Tom Donahoe can't really address the rest of the Bills' problems until he finds his man. As we bring a new coach in here, he's going to have a lot of say-so in personnel, just like Greg did. He's going to have a lot of say-so in who we draft, uh, the makeup of the football team, and what players we move forward with, and a very strong understanding of the salary cap. So some of the issues with regard to next year, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to have to wait until we get a new coach on board to tell you exactly what our plans are. And Jim Hazlitt is unlikely to be Donahoe's choice. The alleged Buffalo outclaws does not exist in his contract, meaning the Bills would have to compensate the Saints to get him. And there are now seven NFL teams searching for head coaches tonight. The Raiders made it official today, firing Bill Callahan just one year after leading his team to the Super Bowl. The Raiders were 4-12. and this season. Also today, the Ravens sweep the AP's NFL awards. Jamal Lewis, the AP's Offensive Player of the Year. Teammate Ray Lewis, the Defensive Player of the Year. Pretty good game this afternoon in El Paso. Minnesota and Oregon in the Sun Bowl. Oregon's Sammy Parker, boy, he had a big day. 16 receptions, 200 yards, and two TDs. But the Golden Gophers would take the lead back on the reverse. Third quarter, Lawrence Maroney around the end. And into the end zone, 28-24. Oregon would answer with two field goals in the fourth quarter, 30-28 to Ducks. But Minnesota had time for an answer. Reese Lloyd on to win it, and he does, 31-30.
Golden Gophers at the Music City Bowl. Wisconsin's Lee Evans made a terrific touchdown reception against Auburn. Here it is. This would tie the game at 14 in the fourth quarter, but Auburn's Ronnie Brown got the go-ahead scores. The Tigers won 28-14, one of five bowl games today and tonight. It's Tucks and Pucks at the HSBC as the Sabres host the Capitals on this New Year's Eve. J.P. Dumont and James Patrick will not play for Buffalo tonight. And the Amherst were back to work this morning at the ESL Center. Rochester has won three straight games. And they began a two-game Texas swing this weekend Friday in San Antonio. With Ryan Miller on recall to the Sabres, that guy, Tom Askey, is the man once again. Well, it's a great opportunity for me to uh, get in there and, and uh, take the ball for a little while. And, um, Hopefully we have a great weekend. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it, and um, you know, we've we've had a lot of success lately, and a lot of confidence building in the room, and uh, we just got to keep that going. And the Amherst recalled goalie Greg Gardner to back up Askey this weekend in Texas. And the Syracuse Orangemen won their eighth straight game last night, beating Livonia grad Kevin Downey and Canisius 87-70. Downey led the Golden Griffs with 16, but Billy Edelin scored a career high for the Orange with 28. I'm just starting to, you know, feel more and more comfortable. I, they played us man for a lot of the game in zone and spurts, so I just, you know, took my time and let things come to me. So a big game for Edelin and a big game for the Orangemen this weekend. They take on Michigan State. Hopefully playing all these upstate schools gets them ready to play some uh, big-time schools. We'll find out Saturday. Thanks, Mark. Well, on the last day of 2003, Wall Street, uh, Wall Street made some gains. The Dow Jones gained more than 28 points. The NASDAQ fell more than 6 points. S&P 500 gained more than two points. Bausch & Lomb, Constellation fell. Corning and Delphi both made slight gains. Eastman Chemical is up. EDS fell. Gannett jumped. Harris is down. ITT and Kodak made gains. Paychex, Pactiv are also up. EAS fell. AHO and Xerox both advanced. We'll be right back. Remember the good old days when being near a mattress was just plain fun? They were so soft and so bouncy. Well, today mattresses are still fun at the Sealy Sleep Center at Raymore and Flanagan, the Northeast's largest. Right now, you'll find a lively selection of Sealy and Stearns and Foster mattresses on sale with free delivery, free setup, and free removal, all at guaranteed lowest prices. Nothing can help you feel so young as a great mattress, even if you're not sleeping on it. Bounce on over for special savings at the Sealy Sleep Center at Raymore and Flanagan. When it's cold outside, savings are heating up inside Chase Pitkin. We know what you need. We'll help you get it done right. This durable yet lightweight Suncast Poly Combo Snow Shovel is only $4.96 with your Shoppers Club card. For winter safety, spread rock salt around driveways and walkways. 50-pound bag, just $2.99, limit 10. When you see a price like this, you better stock up. Shovel up the savings at your neighborhood Chase Pitkin. Get a 2004 Silverado Half Ton Extended Cab LS with an available power pack. Add the available Safe and Sound Power Pack and get 2,000 savings in total. Combine your power pack savings with cash back for a total value of $5,500 on select models. The Chevy Year End Wrap Up. See your local Chevy dealer for the number one selling cars and trucks in Rochester. Steak, sautéed onions, and American cheese on a hoagie roll. The new authentic Philly cheesesteak. If you see news happen, let us know about it. Call the News 10 NBC hotline at 232-1010. And tonight's Friendly's Weather Kids forecast goes to Marissa in Fairport. She'll be enjoying a mostly cloudy brisk day tomorrow. Temperatures are fairly nice for this time of year. Berkeley, 35 to 40. Our weather kids have been delivering great forecasts. Yeah, they're like doing it. a good job, aren't they? They are. Thanks, Josh. Okay. The Greater Rochester YMCA received the third largest donation in its history from a well-known Rochester family. We think it's positively Rochester. Harry Mangurian, Jr., whose family-owned Mangurian Furniture Store, donated $750,000 to the YMCA. The money will be used at YMCA Camp Corey on Cuca Lake. Say that ten times fast. The donation is in honor of Mangurian's father, Harry Mangurian Sr. 
Uh, Mr. Mangarian Jr., who made the gift, his father was one of the first campers at Camp Corey in 1921. So there's a very long history. That money will be used to renovate uh, the dining hall and build some new cabins. Uh, money well spent. Nice gesture. Yep. Yeah, indeed. Thanks for watching this evening. We'll see you back here tonight at 11. Happy New Year. See you at 11. In 2004.